Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 7th of October 2019 and the time has just gone 10.15 for the summer time. And it's been a fairly subdued, quiet start to the European trading session today. Um, the kind of big stories uh, of, this, of, the, uh, of the past few days. Uh, last week, obviously, we had major volatility in global financial markets. We had, so we had some very poor economic indicators uh, out of Germany, for example. The manufacturing level came in at a 10-year low. We had poor service figures from, from, the, um, from, the, from the UK. Uh, the ISM manufacturing report in the US was at a 10-year low. And we also had a slow multi-year low in the ISM non-manufacturing report as well. That really sparked a very sizable sell-off in global stocks in kind of the middle towards the back end of last week. Uh, on Friday, just gone, we had by and large a positive uh, US job support. The unemployment rate dropped uh, to, a, to a 50 year low. The wa wages component did cool a little bit, but nonetheless, wages are still growing and they're growing at a faster rate than inflation. So workers are getting a real increase uh, in wages. And um, the in relation to the, the, between the headline figure and also the, the headline figure came in uh, below expectations, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the August figure was revised higher, so it kind of balanced out, and all, overall, it was a fairly positive finish, finish to Friday. So, the broadly speaking, positive update we've had on Friday um, set European stock markets higher, and also sent US stock markets higher, and it kind of, it kind of chased away some of the fear that, that, that was doing the rounds that, oh, that the US economy is, uh, is clearly going through a slowdown. Uh, over the weekend, um, we've been hearing kind of reports that China aren't exactly um, uh, open to, to the idea of, of a trade deal as the US. Uh, there are certain aspects that they're kind of not willing to compromise with it for the time being in relation to, say, subsidies and industrial policy. And it's, it's believed, or some of the sources in the last few days over the weekend have been coming out that essentially China aren't, 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 aren't as keen as the US to the kind of strike a near term broad trade broad trade agreement. Um, so that's a, kind of a broader trade agreement uh, in the near term is something that President Trump has been talking about in the last few weeks and it would appear that China aren't too um, too keen on striking that deal um, in the near term. This Later this week uh, the US and China will meet, the US and Chinese delegates will meet and we're discussing trade. That's going to be in focus. But also at the same time we have uh, the a second whistleblower has come forward in relation to the uh, the, the, the controversy between President Trump and the President of Ukraine. Um, that is going to ha 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 has likely to hang over President Trump. But we, what we could see is, we, we might see the Donald spending more time talking about trade as a way of actually uh, lifting stock markets and as a, more importantly as a way of um, de deflecting uh, focus away from the Ukrainian situation more towards the trade situation. So on, the, on one hand, you might say, you could argue that the Chinese delegates might you know, look to kind of leverage this and and, and uh, be less forthcoming because they might feel President Trump will be will be more flexible and looking to get get a deal done. At the same time, President Trump might start spending a lot of time focusing focusing on trade as a way of uh, distracting people from the uh, impeachment inquiry. Uh, what was, did you know is uh, take a quick look at the major events of the week ahead of us. Uh, our week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under insights, under news analysis, you will find the article here. So looking at to tomorrow, we have trade, fig trade figures from China. That's obviously going to be in play because of uh, we'll see what, what the kind of state of demand is like in China. So the import side will tell us what domestic demand is like and the export side will tell us whether the, uh, the Trump tariffs are having any impact uh, on, the, on the, and Chinese manufacturers and companies selling out uh, to the best of the world. Uh, tomorrow we have four quarter figures from EasyJet. Uh, 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 tomorrow we also have 30 quarter figures from Levi Strauss. Uh, Wednesday we hear, we hear the, we'll have the minutes from the Federal Reserve update. Federal Reserve most recent meeting, the minutes. Uh, on Thursday, we have, this is when the US-China trade talks uh, kick off. Uh, on Thursday, we have UK manufacturing production. Uh, on Thursday, we have on the market half results. Uh, Thursday, we have a sales report coming out from Donnell. And on Thursday, we have third quarter figures from Delta Airlines. So uh, I'll look, look at some of the, uh, the, the major markets starting off with the indices. So the broad theme 
Try 2019 has been to the upside for uh, for global stock markets, but it is worrying that the uh, the highs that were achieved um, in late September, early October failed to take out the highs of July. But notice how we after we saw a major sell off um, uh, last week. Uh, in, in the middle of last week, there was this particular candle here, which is fairly common across uh, across a few markets, which created the potential um, to be a hammer formation. So essentially, look, notice how we have the, uh, the long wick of the candle here, and the the uh, the, ca the the can the, the shape of the candle tells us that the market was essentially pushed far lower, closed essentially on the high um, of of the, of the day. Uh, so it's quite, it's quite bullish in that respect. And then, of course, what we saw was on Friday, another bullish candle. And for that, we have an inside day today. But essentially, why we can hold below the recent lows, it's likely we could see a move, a further move to the upside. And if you do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this red line here, the majority moving average, and that comes to play at 72.43. We can see on a few occasions that particular metric act as both, both resistance and support not too long ago and if a metric has been important in the past it makes it more likely it will be so in the future but obviously there are no guarantees um on the other hand if the market does manage to turn over on itself keep on for the recent low uh just just north of the seven thousand mark seven thousand obviously a big psychological number which is kind of not, not, not entirely surprising uh, we saw some buyers coming in and uh, and snapping up the um snapping up the FTSE not too far away from that particular metrics and if you do have a size of break below 7000 that will be fairly that will be significant given that we'll be we will be talking about multi-month low territories and if you do break below 7200 we could be looking heading back down towards this zone down here around 6800 or perhaps even 6732 take a look at what's going on in the dax what you will notice is there's a bit between the, the FTSE, the DAX, the Dow Jones, and the S&P 500. We saw some similar price action uh, in, in the last few weeks. And once again, notice how that we had a fairly sharp sell-off on the DAX early October. Fairly sharp sell-off. Um, you know, we did hit um, multi-month lows uh, in the early hours of the, of the, of the, of the first half of the, of the Thursday trading session. But similar to what we saw in the FTSE 100, we have a fairly long wick here, which, which, uh, which uh, denotes indecision and of course as very similar to the FTSE the market traded lower it opened here it traded lower it managed to push higher pull back some of the losses and then essentially closed on the high of, of the day so once again it's not too dissimilar to what we saw on the FTSE 100 so the potential hammer formation that we saw on the FTSE 100 looks this this uh this this, this this candle here looks fairly similar to what we saw on the FTSE 100 Similar scenario on the Friday, we saw the market push push and higher again, which is was obviously um, kind of potentially kind of confirming that that, that 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 the market has reached low in the near term, and we're, and we're off moving off that low. But obviously, today's session has been fairly quiet, and fairly subdued, so we haven't really, really really moved a whole lot. But while we hold above the recent lows down around here, it's likely we could see further gains be made to the upside. So if we do press on higher from here uh, on the on the um, on the uh, on the DAX, we could be looking at retesting this line here, which is a 100-day moving average, and that comes to play at 12,122. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards this zone here in around 12,300. We can see in a few occasions that area, broadly speaking, there's a bit of like consolidation in it, so it could potentially be an area um, of resistance uh, should the market have a, have a decent move to the upside. On the other hand, if the market does manage to turn low or lower on itself and, and take off the recent lows, keep on for this red line here, the trading moving average, and that comes into play at 8, 11,820. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading back down towards here, down around 11,700. Turn your attention to the US and see what's going on over there. Similar scenario whereby Late September into early October, we did see a fairly sizable sell-off uh, on, on the Dow Jones. Market pushed lower, but once again, quite similar to what we saw on the DAX and on the FTSE 100 on, the, on, the, on Thursday. We had a, initially, in the first portion of the trading session, we saw a large sell-off. Market pushed aggressively lower, but then the market was driven back up. 
Uh, in this case, it went back up, firmly but back up above the 30 moving average, the red line here. And it's uh, similar to the DAX and the FTSE 100, managed to close not too far away from the high. So the, what, the, the kind of call of the theme here is the long wake on the, on the, on the daily candle on Thursday. And markets are closing essentially uh, at the, uh, basically at the high of the day. So this could be construed, these could have potential to be hammer formations, which would be show us that, that we, could be, we, we could be in line for a reversal from here. And, and, and following on to Friday, solid move higher onto the upside on, on Friday. And not too dissimilar what we saw with the DAX and the FTSE, whereby we are pretty much having a fairly uh, an inside day, to, inside day to day, whereby the trade range has been fairly small. But essentially, while we hold above the recent lows of in around here, we could see further gains be made. And if you do press on higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards this zone here, just in around the uh, 2000, sorry, 26,800 or maybe down this, maybe say somewhere between say 26,700, 26,800, this zone in around here. And then, it's, then it's, we really need to be taking out the um, the, er, the, uh, the 1st of August, 1st of, of October high before we could, could then consider like a retesting the highs that were achieved in mid September. Uh, what is ever so slightly worrying is that the rally that we saw going into mid-September, the highs of mid-September failed to take off the highs of July, which were the all-time highs. So we're still in the broad rubber trend, but just be mindful that we, the highs here failed to take off the highs here. So if we do have another move to the downside, we could be looking at retesting the lows down here. So if the market does manage to turn over on itself, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here. Kind of the psychology important 26,000 and the 30 moving average which comes into play just south of it at 25,967. But really keep an eye out for this area here. If you take off these lows here, uh, which is 25,742, if you take off those lows there, we then could be heading back down towards this region here, down around 25,200. Looking at the S&P 500, fairly similar situation on that, whereby we had a fairly aggressive sell-off, whereby the uh, fairly aggressive sell-off in, in late September into, er into early October. Notice again, very similar to, to what we saw on the on the um, on the the Dow Jones, the DAX, and the FTSE 100. Fairly long wick um, on the on last Thursday's candle, uh, and of course the market managed to close essentially at the uh, at the high of the session. So once again. Could be construed as a hammer formation here, and if you can hold above the recent lows this area here in around 2,900, we could see further gains be made from here. And we could be looking back up towards just well south of 3,000, but up towards say uh, 2,990. These are the areas here we could be looking at retesting, or maybe up as high as uh, 3,000 itself. If though the market turns over on itself, and we take out the recent lows here in around the kind of 2,900 mark. We could be looking heading back down towards this red line here, the trade moving average, uh, which comes into play at 2,853. Take a look now at what's going on over the gold market. So gold hit a, a six-year high in early September, uh, but we did see a bit of a, a bit of a, a pullback in the gold market. So we've had the lower low, lower high. And a lower low, so and now we're seeing, we're putting the markets pushing higher here again. Now it could be at a, a, a very crucial point because we could be looking if, if the market does manage to run out of steam and turn over on itself, we, we, we then have another lower high. We could be looking at retesting this area here or potentially taking it out. So if the gold market fails to take off this area here in around 15.35, if it drops back below this, drops off from these levels. We could be looking heading back down towards this area here in around 15, sorry, 14.53, or perhaps even down as low as 14.30. On the other hand, if you do manage to hold above this line here, this blue line, 50 moving average, which comes to play essentially on 1500, we could then be looking to retest 15.35 and beyond that up towards the, um, the early September high of in around 15.57. Stick with the commodity team now and keeping uh, taking a look at what's going on on oil. So oil has basically had a very, fairly and uh, terrible run the last say, couple of weeks. So we obviously had the massive jolt to the upside in the wake of the drone attacks in Saudi Arabia. But as you can see here, we've had a colossal sell-off in the gold in the in the oil market. So between Saudi Arabia 
talked about getting back to production quicker than expected and then actually doing that. And then the concerns about the health of the global economy. We, you know, we, we've had, by and large, Ch- the Chinese manufacturing sector is in a great shape. As we saw last week, manufacturing in, 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 uh, in, the, uh, in Germany and the US are at a, are a decade lows. So they're concerns about demand. So what do you know? Uh, the oil market gave up all the gains that it's made and actually, went down, and actually had, had, had a quite, quite a substantial move to the downside. Similar to the equity market, and in recent months we have seen uh, similarish moves on the, equity, on, the, on, the, on the equity front. We, After an aggressive round of selling, we did see this particular candle here, which, to be fair, it isn't exactly your textbook example of a, um, of a, of a hammer, which, which it isn't. But nonetheless, the very, very long wick does suggest indecision. And... If you have what's clearly a very aggressive move to the downside for a couple of weeks, and then you see a, 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 a candle with a very, very long wick, the, the, you know, the indecision could denote we could be in for a bit of a turnaround. And notice how we have been pressing it higher from here. So if you can hold above the recent lows, if you can hold above this area here, just above the recent lows, we could be looking heading back and forth, the kind of psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel on Brent. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at testing this blue line, the 50 moving average, at 60 spot 91. If, however, the market turns over on itself yet again and continues in the recent downward trend, the first port of call would be the uh, would be the recent lows here down around in around the uh, 56 spot 68 area, and then if we go below that, we could then potentially be heading down toward this area here in around the kind of 52 region. On WTI, it's a fairly similar scenario whereby the market has been an aggressive move to the downside, basically now for a, for a couple of weeks now. But similar scenario, we had a very very long wick uh, on Thursday candle, and the market has been pushing higher since then. So if we hold above the recent lows in around the kind of 52 area, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 54. Quite a bit of consolidation was um, was seen in around the kind of 54. And if we go beyond that, this blue line here. The fifth of the moving average then might actually come into play, which comes in, which is at 55 spot 67. If you do have a move to the downside, keep an eye out for this area here. This uh, this line here, which comes to play at 50 spot 36. That that broad zone acted as support on a few occasions in 2019, so that's going to be potentially a big area of support should the market uh, turn over on itself uh, again in the near term. And finally, taking a look at what's going on in currencies, starting off with euro dollar. So it's very, it's, it remains in the kind of very much wider uh, negative trend that's been in for, for some time now, a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. And while we can remain below, say, the kind of the 110 area, it, uh, and also kind of below the kind of 111 area, um, it, it is likely that we could see the market turning over itself yet again. And if, if you take out the recent lows here in around one spot 0879, we could be looking heading back down towards one spot 08. If, however, the market does manage to kind of press on higher, and if you do manage to kind of take out say this this high here in around one spot one spot uh, one spot uh, 11 one, one spot 11, we can then be looking at retesting the um, the late August high in at one spot 11.64. But notice on a few occasions. And uh, we've had quite a few series of lower lows and lower highs. So we really need to be, kind of, at the very least, taking out this area here uh, at a, just north of one spot left before we can begin to think that the, the market is going to shake off the recent, uh, the recent downtrend. Uh, and finally, turning our attention to the British pound versus the US dollar cable. So we obviously had the massive move to the downside in terms of a series of lower lows and lower highs. But... Uh, what's, I suppose you can, you can say if we're confident now that uh, that we're the, um, the calls that were made about is this a hammer formation? Um, we could see that the market pushed had an aggressive move to the, to the downside, but it was driven back up, and the market didn't close um, actually closed nearish um, the high of the, uh, the high of that particular day. And since then, we did see a fairly impressive following that we did see a fairly impressive move on up to the upside. Now, granted. Dragon has given up some of those gains, but we've held, we've managed to kind of hold back above the 50 moving average, and we've been, we've been closing above that for for a few days now. So if you can, as long as you can hold above this blue line here in at one spot 22.53, we 
we could be looking at retesting the kind of 124 area and then if we go beyond that we could be looking at heading it just north up toward this area here at 126. And if on the other hand the market does manage to turn over on itself again and we take out 122 we could be looking at falling backwards into the kind of wider downtrend that's been in play for some time and we could be looking at heading south of 120 down toward this area here at one spot 1958. Um, this before I go, uh, if you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on the reviews. Thank you very much.